Good morning! Um, we are out here at the pasture and as you maybe saw in the most recent vlog, we got the shed moved out to its actual place. Uh, now that we're getting close to construction, which I'm super excited to announce, we uh, got cleared to close and we are expected to close uh, actually here in a week, like this coming week, then we can start construction. So you'll, you guys are gonna start seeing some stuff. We're gonna be doing a virtual tour of what our future farmhouse is going to look like. Um, roughly to give you guys a really good idea. I'm really excited to do that. Um, but back to the shed. We got the shed moved out here and actually if you can tell we did a pad. We're in Florida so if you're not in Florida um, we experience flooding sometimes so you want to raise your structures up off of the ground. So we've got a one foot high pad for the shed and um, it's just a standard shed but we're already starting to see just from the dew. We haven't even had any rain but just from the dew, you see this, this hard, harsh line here that is erosion from just the runoff from the roof. Davis is going to show you guys how he is going to install gutters on our shed to divert water. Now, he is a roofer, but keep in mind what he is going over is uh, per Florida code. Um, we have very specific uh, codes down here in Florida because we have hurricanes and things like that. So what he is gonna be going over is to code to Florida, but he also said something about smacka, smacna. <laughs> it's a sheet metal. Basically, it is the national, sheet metal regulations. the national sheet metal regulations. He's the roofer, not me. So, but I'm kind of relaying some information to you. But he's gonna go over everything with you guys, show you what all you need, um, explain details so that you guys can also kind of calculate it yourself, and then show you how to install it. You can pick up all this at Home Depot. What we got is a five inch gutter. You can get six inch. Uh, it all depends on your roof surface area. Our shed doesn't really have a big roof. So I opted for the cheaper on the five inch. Um, if you have a larger roof surface, then you might want to go with the six inch. That's all going to be relative to what you're working with. Um, for a house, if you had the, if you, I mean, depends on what you're putting gutters on. If you're putting gutters on your house, then I would recommend a six inch just for the extra water flow. Uh, for a small shed like this, a five inch is going to do just fine. Um, so we got our five inch gutters. The downspout, these are just the two by three downspouts because, like I said, we're not dealing with a whole lot of water flow, so we went with the smaller uh, the downspouts as well. Uh, these are your straps that go with your downspouts. Uh, very simple, they come with the screws already. They're about a dollar and some change, about a dollar and a half a piece. And to install your strap, you take it at a backwards angle like this, and you hook it into the front, and you spin it back like this, and get it to really set in there. And then you clip it onto the back. Let me move my hand so you can get a better view of that. And you clip it onto the back like that. And then you drive your screw from the outside, and that keeps your screw down at the right angle and also allows it to penetrate through the metal and gives it support as well on the back with the extra thickness of the metal. Instead of just having a strap to screw to the front, then you're relying on only your thickness of the metal to support at the screw. This way, you have your extra thick strap to help support at the screw. And where these straps hook under is gonna be under your drip edge, which is your edge metal on your roof. Some of them are gonna be tight. This shed's got pretty tight drip edge. They wrapped it in one piece, so it makes it a little tight. They didn't put no corners on there. Um, so we might have to do a little notching in the metal. Uh, if yours has an overhang, that's great. Uh, some places they add a one by two behind the drip edge to keep the water from kicking back on the fascia, and that helps save your fascia wood. This is all vinyl and, uh, and aluminum, so we had no need for that extra kick out. Uh, so that's where your that's how you would install your straps and then we will move on to uh, these are your downspout outlets these help connect your downspout to the gutter you cut a hole the same size as your hole right here on the on the bottom of the gutter and this slips in from the top of the gutter and that allows you to put rivets screws whatever you want to do to keep your outlet from moving around I recommend pop rivets um, this is just a shed. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna install anything on them because it's not a, not anything that I'm worried about if it ever leaks or anything. 
Uh, this is just purely for water diversion to keep the pad from washing out. Uh, if this was your house, I would recommend pop rivets or screws. It all depends on what you're working with. For screws, what you would need are self-drilling screws, metal to metal. You don't want metal to wood. Metal to wood is not going to grab your inside metal pieces properly. It, it's meant to go through the metal into wood. You always want a metal to metal screw. Preferably with neoprene washers depending on where you're putting the screws at. Um, for your straps on your downspouts, we opted to go for the back straps just for a nice cleaner look on the front. Uh, they do make straps that install over the face of the the downspout and you get two screws but leaves the screws exposed and it just doesn't look as clean I opted for the back straps and you uh, for a 10 foot stick per Florida code or per smack the regulations it requires a strap 12 inches from your bottom 12 inches from your top and every five feet in between uh, so for a 10 foot piece you would need three straps and that is for wind mitigation so wind doesn't snatch your downspouts off of your edge. To complete your gutters, Home Depot is nice enough to sell end caps so you don't have to fabricate your own end caps. Um, you would need a left and a right depending on your circumstances. They also sell prefabricated corners and stuff like that so uh, they have everything you need to run a gutter system on whatever you're doing, whether it be corners or anything. Ours is just a straight run, so it makes it pretty simple. Uh, to seam your gutters together, you can, you can lap them together. It doesn't look as clean um, as far as water flow because the gutters don't really sit together that well the way that they're designed with the angles. So they design strap uh, cover plates that will go over the front of your gutters. Take your two gutters and you butt them together real tight bunch of and you put a bunch of sealant in between here I recommend caulking nice waterproofing and then you install that over the seam and that keeps your seam nice and watertight and helps it to look clean these are made to actually sit tight with the metal the gutters when you lap them into each other they don't really tend to sit real tight together without the help of screws and what type of caulking would you recommend because I know uh, that you're very particular about well we stuff. I use a, we use polyurethane um, just for the elasticity for um, into the metal. Uh, really, you, you wanna use anything that, except for silicone. Silicone really don't do well in metal. It expands and contracts too much. It will allow your metal to really separate too much and, and create voids inside your metal. You're gonna want something that's strong, but also elastic because when metal heats up, it does expand. So you gotta have something that's gonna allow it to expand and contract with itself. Uh, I recommend a polyurethane is what, what I recommend. Um, they do sell that it comes with its, a, a, a seam sealer. I've never personally used this and I don't know what it's made with because it doesn't tell you what it's made with. Um, so I'm just going to use my own sealer instead of that one. Uh, as far as equipment, we got your downspout outlet this is your 90 degree elbow to kick your water away from your building uh, because we don't want water to wash out our pad we also opted for the extendable outlets these extend up to I think uh, 55 inches so, yeah sounds really weird doesn't it <laughs> so and these are <laughs> that was funny wasn't it I extended it. Uh, these are made for the 4x3s or the 2x3s and then you cut off the excess if you want to connect them together to make it even longer. Uh, one is plenty for us just to get the water off the pad and into the grass. And that's it. And we will now start moving on to install and go from there. Alright, so we got our measurement for where we're going to place our downspout. We're going to put it 12 inches from our opposite corner over there, uh, just to have it on the back side. Um, so always make sure you got your right stick of gutter. I put the end cap on it just to help remind what side of the gutter that you're having to cut from. Um, go ahead and flip your gutter over and then get your center mark. We're going to do 12 inches. And that's going to 
be the center of our downspout. And you can just eyeball it, it ain't gotta be nothing perfect. Just make sure that your edges of your outlet don't go over the edges like that. So always make sure that you center up the outside edges of your outlet. Then you just put it tight. Give her a couple circles. Then you have your mark. Get you some tools. You're gonna need something to drill a hole into the metal. Drill you a few holes. Just big enough. If you have yourself a nice pair of sheet metal snips. Just big enough to get your snips in there to start your hole. Get it rounded out onto your outside edges of your wobbly line there. And we don't have a line here, so we're going to imagine one. Um, so then you go through, you do a little check, you realize, oh crap, I made it too small. You also got to add in the width right here. So now that we got our rough cut, we can go through and now clean up the lines. Now that we can see better what we're doing, I should have brought my thinner set of snips. These big snips are a little too big. I, I made this one tight. It, my, mine's a really, really tight fit, only because I'm opting to not use any fasteners in it. Just because this is for the farm and I'm not, I'm just trying to save some time. All it really needs is just a good bed of sealant, and if you cut that metal really, really tight, it's, it's not going to go anywhere. But if you're doing this for your house, I always recommend using your, your fasteners just for uh, longevity. Always remember to tool in your sealants. You can't just run the bead and leave it as it lays. You have to have some form of tooling for your sealant. You have to force the contact between the two. So tool it in. I put the caulking inside. I put caulking You don't have to make yours as tight drops right in place if you plan on using fasteners. But I planned on doing this as a no fastener system at least on the gutter itself. Make sure you don't have no rolled edges when you tool in your caulkings. What I'm talking about rolled edges, if you look at this edge right here, it has kind of round to it. And if you look over here, what I did is I, I really flattened it out. That's gonna keep the water from beating on that rolled edge and that water will eventually work that rolled edge up. So you always want around your outside edges of your exterior caulkings, especially for high water ponds. You want to go through and really flatten down that outside edge so that the water goes right over it without no resistance instead of that, that, that small raised, even if it's just a small, small raised edge. If you give that water any kind of resistance, it's gonna, water is, is going to work its way underneath it. Uh, so you always want to make sure you have the flattest as, as, as possible surface for the water to travel over. Alright, so now we're going to get ready to set our straps in place. Um, down here, I like to set my first one six inches from my, my first edge. And then it's every 30 inches from there. <laughs> but this stuff don't stop falling. That's going to equal about five straps and what that's going to do is going to put your next strap on the next one your straps if you're living up north and you're watching this you might opt for a closer strap pattern say 24 inches just because of you guys have snow and ice i'm not entirely sure what the regulations are for up north on the weight grip on for the uh, weight bearing uh, so you, if you are installing gutters up north i would definitely look into your strap distance down here we don't have snow and ice so our gutters aren't holding water for that long they're just di diverting water which is why we only need the straps every 30 inches uh, to mitigate wind um, so if you are doing gutters up north look into your strap detail for how many straps you may need these screws are a quarter inch drive 
And what I recommend doing is push your strap down and go ahead and start your screw just a little bit through the metal. You don't want to go too far. You want to keep it flush with the back side of here. What that's going to do, that's going to keep your strap from moving. Um, what I see a lot is when people go to install these, they don't, they don't put the straps tight. They don't keep the straps in place, so they're always fighting with their straps when they're trying to get it up underneath the drip edge. I recommend starting just a little bit on your screw. Keep it flat with the back so it doesn't interfere with you sliding up behind your drip edge. But what that's going to do is that's going to keep your strap in place, and now you have something you can hold on to when you're installing your gutter. And it also gives you something to pick up on when you set your first side instead of having to come from underneath if you're up top above it you can grab that strap and you can pick it up and set your screws that way it just makes it a lot easier for install all right so as you can see the screws and the edge of the straps went underneath the drip edge and you bottom the drip edge out to the top of the screw and that's going to help keep the water from running back on that screw like uh so that's all you got to do and then you drive your screw in as soon as your screw touches on your strap you want to stop you don't want to overdrive this and put too much torque on your strap because uh, what that's going to do is going to lift up the front of the gutter too much and you're no longer going to have a nice level gutter right, we're measuring for our second piece because these only come in 10 foot pieces This, you cut that other section off just to give yourself room so that you can have nice clean cuts. Um, you can try to force your thing through there, but if you plan on using your other section of metal, doing that eventually you would torque the metal to a point where you would only have, you would lose more usable surface area. Uh, so cutting this extra line just allows you to make room for your snits to make that turn right there. Um, if you have a chop saw, even just a chop saw with a wood blade, you, you can cut these things with a chop saw. Uh, the metal's real, real soft. So that's another reason for the small stress cuts is because the metal is so soft, it's very easy to rip the metal. And then you only lose an inch to two inches as opposed to if you torque the metal you end up losing five to six inches of metal. I'm going to show you on the last one. Uh, these literally just slap right over to the outside. I recommend set your curved side first because that's the one that's going to be the most trouble really getting set in there the proper way. Sometimes they want to be a little aggravating. So you get that first one set, then you work on that. Yeah, see. They like to do that quite often. Like a pop metal, so you want to kind of hold it in place. And you get that one. You give a couple of smacks. You want to get something in there, you have to cut yourself a little notch for the end of your drip. Uh, your end of your gutter to come just a little bit past it because when you have a flat deck like say a shape it's all flat that water's going to come off right here on the edge too we're lucky enough we got a metal roof this rib blocks most of the water uh so the water's only going to come off right here but if this was a shingle roof i would have water coming off all the way in the corner as well so that's why you want your, your gutter to come all the way to the edge of your actual roofing system your tops are going to look a little funny up until you put that seam plate on. Just make sure that your bottom is. So for your seam plate, run you two beads of caulking, just like that. Your 
top first. bottom which your corners pushed in then you have a top which is completely round so if you try to take your pushed in sides they're not going to fit together you have to take that open end to go around and they're they're kind of they fit real tight so it's going to take a little bit of muscle but they're meant to fit just like that and what that's going to allow is your water flow is coming this way this is your direction of water flow. What that's going to do is that's going to allow the water to go past this junction so that water doesn't leak out of your outlets. If you were to put this on the other way and say you had pop that off right there and say you put this bottom piece, you put this wide open piece down here at the bottom and you had to take your inside and you had to seam it that way. What that's going to do is that's going to put the top of your seam inside the metal and that's going to allow the water remember your water flow is coming down this way that's going to allow your water to come out of your downspout so always remember that when you're connecting downspouts together that they're made to go a certain way so that the water flow goes with the seam not against it of you guys are wondering how we're going to make this cut in the middle right here you know this is a round piece of downspout there's nowhere to get your snips to grab um, you could come from all the way and then make a cut or just remember what side of your downspout that you're keeping so this is your bad side so you can just take real close to your to your line take a drill bit open that up to get your snips in there now you ain't got a cut so far and because we're not keeping the other side of this downspout I'm just going to cut it like this so I don't have to keep switching my snips.